It is recording. Yeah. I, I just hit the button. Bill put me in charge of you, Lisa. Excellent. That is so good. I need I need someone in charge you of me. Try. So <laughs> Max, you're the pilot and I'm the co-pilot. So let's go. Yeah. So I'm the pilot, apparently. I just said my my little piece, but you know, I just um somebody's just said everything is not the same. Now everything in the world is constantly changing. It's never. It's always shifting. It's always shifting. It's we, we live on shifting sand, uh, but reality is a constant. Love is a constant. Um, your peace of mind is a constant, and that's available to you. So you look out in the world, and you see something going on, and you think that's what reality is, and then you make it your reality, and. Um, you know, you could, it's in a sense, you're watching a movie and when you watch a movie, you have reactions to the movie and you cry, you laugh. It's a horror movie. So you get scared. Um, and this is what the media is in a sense. It's an idea, um, of a horror movie. You know, all of a sudden it seems like the media has discovered words like grim and, and another death and another death and another death and another death. And they, they just, you know, plaster you with these ideas which make you uh, react in a certain way. But who has the choice to react? You do. It's totally your experience. It's not out there. It's, um, it's not happening to you. It's your possibility to enter into a whole new experience. Is it normal to cry all of the time with this new journey? Nothing is normal. Cry all the time, don't cry. It doesn't make any difference. Reality doesn't skip a beat. It just goes, it just goes ahead. Just remember that before this was occurring, you were just you going about your business and believing that, okay, well, you know, this is, you know, this is my life and it's so great and everything is incredible. You know, what did you think was going to happen here in the world? This is what the world is. The world is either a recognition that everything dies or a recognition that nothing dies. So now you make a choice. Who is going to make that choice? I can't make that choice for you. I can make that choice for myself. So, I want to I want to stick with that what that guy said or whoever said that what you just said out loud is that everything is not the same mm. because I that's an important one because everything is the same actually so let's see a, a show of hands here who thinks that everything is not the same during this time and be honest like this isn't so who thinks that things have changed show of hands okay and see, this is where we have to start with honesty and just looking. That's all, that's all that's ever happening here. Okay, how many of you before all of this started, two weeks ago, let's say, three weeks, two or three weeks ago, how many of you had problems? Great show of hands. So nothing's changed. The only thing that happened here is that your problem from three weeks ago just changed in form. Right? So what A Course in Miracles is inviting us to do is look at the content and the source of the thing that's causing all the problems. Like I remember Max years ago, you told me something Muji said, and it's just always stuck with me, is what was your problem four problems ago? Can anyone remember what your problem was four problems ago? right so all that's happening here is that we're constantly distracted by the next shiny thing and what we're invited to do now is to pause and and really look at like what's going on at the source here and to see like there nothing has changed nothing like I've, I've been looking at lesson 189 the last couple of days from the line that says the law of seeing. There's a law of seeing in A Course in Miracles that you will see that which you feel within. So if you feel hatred or you feel worry or you feel fear, that's literally all you're going to see. But when you feel the love of God within you, 
that's what you see. And so the topic here that Bill's invited us to, sh to share on is a new world arising. And so that's, that's where I'm keeping my focus. It's like, yeah, it's, the form is changing, but there's nothing to fear here. It's just that the, the past is over now. We can't go back there to where we were. Yeah, I think we're always looking at the idea that, you know, we get a, we, we have a choice. You have a choice that either everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. Either, um, I wrote this down, what was, everything is, everything is a sign or, or nothing is a sign. Everything's alive or everything is dead. I mean, you've got to be honest with yourself about what, of, where your care all of a sudden comes from like because when you look at the world nothing has changed people are dying they're dying apparently of a virus they're dying of complications of a virus they're dying of air pollution 55,000 died of cholera this year like cholera you know kids are dying of starvation in places so nothing has shifted in the world it's shifted in a sense that now it seems to be affecting my lovely beautiful lifestyle here in australia where you know i go out surfing every day and you know i'm free to do pretty much anything that i want but you know so all of a sudden it's become something completely different now you're upset because you know you can't hug your grandchildren and you can't you know touch them and stuff and then on the other side of that is someone like me who says wow i love social distancing i'm so glad i don't have to hug anyone because when i'm hugging them <laughs> my mind goes what is this for what am i doing my bodies our bodies don't actually meet in that space <laughs> we can meet with our minds beyond this space beyond where we are right now. And that's the constant. That's the constant that we're talking about. Like the rubber hits the road at some point, and this is where the rubber hits the road. Okay, so you're in an experience only of yourself. You have a point of viewing which you look out into the world and you see things that upset you and you see things that you don't like. So where does that come from? Again, in the world, it seems to be changing, but nothing has really changed. There's still death and destruction. There's still 16 million Americans sent off to a second world war to kill other people. That's always been the case. Look, they're still bombing in Syria, in Afghanistan. Kids are still dying of starvation. It's just that you see something and you think that, oh, this is the ultimate death. <laughs> <laughs> this is really something I can grasp onto and say, look, you know, the Course in Miracles, it doesn't work. You know, peace of mind doesn't work. Look, this is what reality is. It's death and destruction. And that's a choice that you make in your mind. Is reality death and destruction or is reality peace of mind and a constant and something that is available to you all the time. Do you have to practice? Yeah, it's a practice. Everything is a practice. Be honest and be practical with yourself. You know, really look at your thoughts. Like, think about all the negative thoughts you have over a virus. I mean, a virus is alive. It has every right to be just as you are. Why has that, why, why do you need to decide that it's something evil? Why do you need to decide that, that it's something that shouldn't be here? If it's here, then it must, it must be meant to be here. If you're here, then this is where you are. If that is here, then this is where it is. Nothing has changed in that sense. So you have an opportunity here to move through it. Look at your thoughts, study each one of your thoughts and ask yourself, is that true? Is it a true thought? Is this yeah. what reality is? There is a possibility to find peace of mind and it's available to you all the time. And it's simply just a choice. A virus is not a living organism. 
I have no idea what that means. I, all I know is that here you are. Everything is either alive or everything is either dead. Yeah. So when you yeah, see... But that's what like the media is saying and the scientists are saying that it's not even alive, but it's alive in the sense that it's having seeming consequences. And we're, it, people are afraid of it. So my prayer right now during this time is that whoever can hear this right now to not miss the gift of this moment of what is unfolding as a gift. Because what most people are doing is like, this is bad. We've categorized it and judged it as if it should not be happening, but it is. And, and now we have an opportunity to choose to use this time to not wait for later when the government tells us we can start going out again. Like there have been reports that this isn't going to be over until next summer, 2021. And we're going to have to start going back out into the world again. Like we cannot keep businesses closed forever. So a new world is emerging. A new world is arising and life is going to be different. So each of us now has the opportunity to, to say, okay, I'm going to now look at what I'm afraid of. Like, are you afraid of death? Okay, you want to look at that. Why are you afraid of not being here? Why are you, are you afraid of being sick? Are you afraid of body symptoms? Are you afraid of not hugging? Are you angry about not hugging? Are you, anything other than peace and joy is a grievance and a block in you that you must have the willingness to look at and have it be removed. It cannot be removed without you looking at it. So now what we're doing, I love so much, Max, when you always say point of viewing. Like for those of you who know The Healing Cure, my online program, it was inspired by Max saying that phrase to me years ago. He said, we don't have a point of view, we have a point of viewing. And our point of viewing is the point where we stand in the state of mind where we're abiding and we're viewing from that point. So what are you seeing? What's your point from, the, from where you've been hanging out? What's your location? And, and to me, transformation is nothing more than becoming aware of the point of viewing, deciding if you like it or not. And if you don't like the point of viewing, move you you get to pick up your bed and walk and so this is the point i love it that we really are now being called as teachers to look at everything so um are there any questions or anything that anyone wants to ask or um say anything anybody want to jump in jump, jump on in <clears throat> You can either say it in the comments or you can uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask a question or share something. Hey, Lisa. Yep. This is your old friend, Rebecca Johnson. Hey, Hello. Becky. Hey, can I just tell you, um, I just got like this sh short little story. I work with a man who he's 58 years old and in January he was diagnosed with cancer and he was doing aggressive chemo, you know, treatments through it. So he's been out of work through all this stuff, you know, and so there's been like no visiting and stuff with him. So um, he called me this morning and said, they're discontinuing the chemo, not working, blah, blah, blah. He just wanted me just to do phone calls because he couldn't do it. And it's one of those things where your first reaction is like, what can I do? I need to help. I got to go. So it immediately came to me. I just want to wrote, I just want to read what I wrote in my journal today. And I think this is a good message for all, okay? It said, um, uh, t -t 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 we are no longer able to fix, plan, strive, or correct. And that's pretty much where I was at. I was like, I can't really do much, Ross. I can make phone calls for you and stuff. We can FaceTime. But, and I just said too that, you know, when you were talking about we need to live, the other thing I wrote down today was realizing that days 
start to meld into each other and eating comfort food, not getting dressed, not showering, constant binge watching gets boring. Time to get the big girl pants on and live, not wallow. Because that's what the last couple of weeks, everyone's like, oh, I'm bored at home. I'm doing this and that. And I'm like, there's lots of opportunity for this because the world just pretty much went quiet. It went quiet. What a beautiful quiet, thing. You know, and there's like a bazillion things to do. Um, not even so much to do, but we have an opportunity here to be still, be quiet, and figure out what our new normal is going to be. What parts of my old normal do I want? I don't want to bring that back. I mean, yeah, we you don't know, even have to it, figure that out. We don't even have yeah. to figure anything out. There's nothing to figure well, out in that sense. Yeah, yeah you, you, have a, a, you do have an opportunity just to be quiet and to, to just enjoy this space. I always think of, you know, and I, I, I've been saying it a lot lately about how, um, you know, before all of this happened, just how in Australia on a Saturday, all the shops would close at 12 o'clock and nothing would happen till Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. as a child, I mean, you know, we watched the football in the afternoon and obviously restaurants were open, but all the shops were closed. Nothing was. And so there was this quiet. There was this chance to pause and reset, even if you're a Monday to Friday person who works, you know, you had an opportunity to just be. And, you know, here we, here we is a beautiful, beautiful opportunity to just be, to just take a look at your thoughts, to take a look at the way you, you, you structure your mind. It's an opportunity to read, to um, send out thank you cards to people who have done something for you. It's an opportunity to find gratitude in the simplest, simplest things in the mundane, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to be so grateful for the internet, for example, how incredible, what an incredible place we're at, where I can get on this Zoom, I'm lying in my bed here <laughs> in Australia, and, you know, th there's an opportunity all the time to let go of the negative and to look at possibility. What is your negative thought about this thing, whatever thing it is, it could be anything, what is it going to bring you that it's going to give you a result that will satisfy you so it's complete? Is that possible? In my mind, I don't see that's possible. There's no, there's no negativity. There's no possibility of, of a problem being solved inside a negative bubble that will bring me peace of mind. Now, we can look at a practical aspect and say, okay, well, you know, scientists will discover a cure for polio and, you know, we'll get a vaccine and, and kids won't get polio and beautiful, you know, the greatest minds are working on the problems right now and excellent. How lucky are we in that sense that the greatest minds are busy right now and we have the possibility to be our own greatest mind. What is your greatest mind? What is your greatest possibility? What is your greatest thought that you can have in this space? If thoughts are healing, then those great minds that are working on the things that we're so grateful for them to be working on, then their thoughts are in a positive scenario their thoughts are in a possibility so your thoughts can also be in that kind of possibility and so you have the opportunity to be and do where you are right now and you know the idea of getting bored i mean i mean even just the fact that you can sit and watch netflix <laughs> is is a miracle it's an absolute miracle like so where is your problem now, right now, as we sit here, as we're talking, and you're all here on the call, look into your mind and ask yourself, where is your problem in the now of this awareness? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and see, that's where it's, it really is a shift in attitude. It's a shift in mind of, of reach, really reaching, like Max said, to the greatest possibility that you're not going to wait anymore like what can you do in this space 
that's that's where like we're, we're, we've been called. I love that so many places in A Course in Miracles, Jesus is speaking to us, and Jesus is nothing more than our whole self saying, how holy are you who have been given the function of lighting up the whole world, exclamation point. And we will not let ourselves be sad today, for if we do, we fail to take the function given to you by God. And happiness is my function here, and joy is my function here. And I have one goal, to bring awareness of my oneness to all minds, that the unity and creation of God may be extended. These kinds of sentences, which we've all read, we all know them, but now it's like, oh, one more thing, one more thing to get out of the way, and then I'll take my function. Like, and I'm grateful that all the things that are happening to everybody right now in the world already happened to me. Like, I already lost my job unexpectedly two times. I've already had zero dollars or coins for years, large stretches of time where I didn't have a job, no security, no safety, incurable disease, which happened to have been a virus that caused all sorts of body symptoms. And I thought I was dying every day. I've already gone through it all. And guess what? I'm fine. Like you recognize that in your worst, worst fear, there was nothing to fear. And so finally, thankfully, I decided to look at all this stuff. Like, and what Max said is so true. Where is your problem now? And then the mind will say, well, I don't have any money. No, now. Like your mind just went to the past and the future in that thought. Like in this now moment, you don't have a problem. But the mind, it just keeps taking you, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to have dinner tonight. So I'm not going to have money to pay the bills. And, and where will I live? And no. So this is, again, like this is a radical path in my mind, but it's simple to, to keep coming back to this place of like, okay, where am I? But who's, and then again, who's, who's asking the question? It can only be a body identity that cares about staying in, in this timeline. And each of us has to really finally confront that one too. And that was my freedom when I didn't care about Lisa Natoli. I didn't care if she existed or not. Like it was like, okay, today could be my last day. And then more fears, like the fear of, of body symptoms. Like it's just, it's just the mind just going to make up another one, another one, and another one. Until mm. finally there really is, the mind just dismantles. That's my experience of it. Like that whole thought system just crumbles and then there's just laughter and there's just joy. And look at, we're together. How awesome is this? Like we're all of us together. are together. We're, we're always together. We're always here. We're always yeah. just here. It, are these are these all um, course students? Everyone here reads the course. Right. Mm. So Louise says, my husband and I spoke about this the other night that we are resilient because we have gone through hardships before. How the world is responding is not a new experience for many my age. Yes. Yeah. And you want to say think, anything on that, Max? Oh, I was going to say I think you you know. We, we can move it off the idea of, um, I was going to say, is, is if this is a course group, um, everyone here reads ASIM or has read it or has done the lessons or I always come back to what's the central thing the course aims to teach. So there's, in my mind, there's two. Okay. There's one that's stated in lesson 132, which is there is no world. So, what does that mean? It, it means what it says. There yeah. is no, the world you see doesn't exist. Now, science, you know, quantum physics works on that, on that theory, works on that possibility. Uh, so when you look into your mind, where does the world actually exist? And without me in the world, where is it? 
So without me commenting and talking here with you and talking about this and talking about that, where is the world? You know, I make an idea of duality, that there's me and there's a world out there. Without me knowing about it, how does it exist? So take um, the internet. You know, if you lived before 1995 and there was no internet, it doesn't, it didn't exist. You don't know anything about it. It's not even in your realm of possibility unless you thought of it. I thought, hmm, wouldn't it be great to have something that, you know, we could just all talk on and watch movies on and, and walk around in. But the fundamental theme of the course is that there is no world. And the other theme is that the course is not about knowledge. It's not about knowing stuff. It's not about, oh, well, now I have the answer. It's about peace of mind. And it states it in the beginning and somewhere else in the course. This course is about peace of mind. And this is possible. Peace of mind is just a choice. It's a simple step from here to here. And you make that choice every moment, every single moment, you make a choice. And in a sense, and science has recently discovered this, is that in experiments, is that you have already made the choice. The fix is already in. So you think, oh, well, I'm going to scratch my nose now. But that choice was already made. What I just said was already made. So <laughs> you've actually already chosen for peace you've actually already woken up from this dream and now you're just a residual idea. Everything here is ephemeral. Everything here disappears. Everything here fades away. But what is a constant? The constant is the possibility of awareness and peace of mind and your gratitude and love, which goes beyond this world. So that is available to you. And it's available in every single moment. Mm -hmm. And you, this is the, I need do nothing. All I need to do is turn my attention to remembering the solution. All I need to do is turn my attention to remembering the solution. All the petty stuff of world, I've got to get money. I need to um, not to hug anyone. I need to stay indoors. I can't get sick. I need a job. I need, yeah, they're all just things, you know, every, you know, this is what your, this is what life is here on planet earth. It's an idea of stuff and things and people, but the constant is your peace of mind and your possibility that that is so and the availability of it to you each and every single moment of the day. That never changes. All that other negativity, all that stuff, let the world be as you know, vicious and hateful and deathly as it, as it wants to be. It has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm in gratitude and love and my mind is at peace. And when my mind is not at peace, then I ask the question, why is my mind not at peace? I can just step back into it. It's available to me. What is that negative thought I just had? That's an old idea. Why am I still thinking about that old idea? I just let it go. It's of no value to me. It's literally of no value to me. It does nothing and it goes nowhere. Yes, in the world, as it says in the course, it's okay to plan. You're going to plan for things. Okay, make your plans. You know, in the world, it's really good to wash your hands. Wash your hands. In the world, it's good to do those things. So, but they're not a problem. You're just doing them. You know, if, if you're sick, you go to a doctor. If you decide you don't want to go to a doctor and you want to meditate out of your sickness, then do that. You see, none of it is a problem. It's just the choice that you make. Don't separate out the ideas as this one is better than another. This one is more important. This one is the solution. This is the one that will, you know, this is the way to do it. Nobody knows the way to do it. 
nobody knows any of anything here. You know, that's the one thing that you've really discovered when you look at out in the world and you see, for example, your politicians and, and you know, people going about their business, you realise, oh, they're just, they're just using the information that they have. They're doing the best they can with the information that they have. And whether it's faulty information or good information is not really our concern. My concern is peace of mind. And in my peace of mind, I spread that peace of mind throughout my world because this is the world of my own making. Mm. It's not out there. It's not, it's not happening to me. It's me making a world. So I have the possibility of that awareness in every single moment. Yeah. yeah I love that. And I love these mind mending ideas like where, without you, where is the world? And I remember years ago, we, Max and I have a mutual friend named Greta. And Greta said to me, Lisa, do you ever notice that everyone dies, but never you? And I was like, oh my God, right. Everyone dies, but never you. And, and we think, well, when I die, the world will still be here. How do you know? Did you die? You don't know. You, and, you, you re and we hear these, these you know, near-death experiences where people have the experience, there is no world. There is only oneness. There, there are, there's only love. And so now we begin to, to have this experience here in this room, in this world. It says that we're going to close in 114 seconds. So I want to just, just invite everyone, since Max, you, you called the attention to Lesson 132. It's one of my favorites. I say that about them all. But I lose the world from all I thought it was. And it has this just great... Um, Thing that says to take 15 minutes in the practice and and to say it with this I who remain as God created me would lose the world from all I thought it was and here it is for I am real not I Lisa Natoli but I the I am that is our oneself for I am real because the world is not and I would know my own reality that's, that's the point we're all come to, where we recognize our oneness, we recognize our wholeness, we recognize the love that joins us all together. And now there really is only stillness and listening. So Max, any parting words in our last few moments? Sure, peace, be at peace, don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Let the world be what the world is. Just be yourself, be at peace, watch your thoughts, practice, 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 and when you've done practicing, just start practicing again. Here we are. This is our moment. This is the possibility. You can be at total peace. Mm -hmm. Be free. It's your choice. Yeah. Look to your awareness. Look to the possibility of the ideas that you can be at peace. Look at the idea that it's all just an idea. They just come and they go. They come and they go. So just be at peace. The Max and Lisa show. We're going to have to do this again. Peace.